Okay, a sec. In a later part, uh, later chapter. Uh, okay, so here's the IP header. So packets at this uh, at this uh, level. Um, now notice you have the uh, source IP address, right? Destination IP address. Of course, those things must be in there. Uh, TTL. What does that stand for? Time to live. What does that do? Yeah, when you create a packet, you put a number in there, a default number, depends on the protocol and the implementation, but typically it's a big number like 255. Okay, so you put 255 in there. Every time this goes through a router or any, any hop on the network, that number gets decremented by one. When it gets to zero, what happens? Packet dies and goes to packet heaven. <laughs> okay, so, so what's the purpose of that? Why do you need something like that? Because if you didn't have that, you'd still have packets from 1969 circulating on the network, right? I mean, it's a way to prevent it from getting stuck in a loop or something like that. They don't circulate forever. Yeah. Curiosity, do you happen to know what's the maximum number of hops required to get between, let's see, let's state this carefully. Given two points on the network, yeah, what's the maximum? There's a minimum number of hops to get from A to B. For all pairs of points, what's the maximum of that? Uh, and that's a good question. Uh, better be less than 255. Yes. You only have a <laughs> light here. To I, was wondering, I mean, does anybody have a rough idea? Uh, I don't know. I mean, you can. I mean, if you ping some guy, you know, on the other side of the world, you know, it's typically four or five, right? It's usually not not very many. It's a, it's a small number, I would say, typically. Now, I'd be surprised. It, you'd probably have to work out to get over 10 or 12, would be my guess. What's that? Well, if someone does something wrong, like does the routing correctly, then you can use the strange. Yeah, yeah. In that case, you probably get to 255 pretty fast, right? <laughs> so, okay. Uh, okay, so, okay, so we've got a TTL, uh, source and destination, and so on and so forth. Okay, fragmentation. Okay, what's that all about? Uh, I want to talk just a little bit about uh, IP fragmentation here. Uh, okay, I said that. Uh, right, so fragmentation, let's just look at that. There's a couple of uh, bits here, you know, flag bits and stuff that deal with fragmentation, so here we go. So, okay, so as you send your packet over the network, it goes over various links, right? Now these links are very heterogeneous, right? One link could be something, one link could be something completely different. Each link has a maximum size packet that, it's, that it can handle, okay? Now, you might start off thinking you can send rather large packets. It's more efficient to do that, right? Because less overhead due to headers and whatnot. So bigger is probably better. So you fire off a packet. But it gets to a certain, and it's a big packet. Okay, so here we go. Here's the packet, here's the header, right? Okay, but it gets to a particular link, and this link can't handle a packet of that size. So what happens? Should we just kill it, make them send it again? Yeah, the guys, the people who designed IP, they said, well, okay, it's more efficient. You know, don't kill it. You know, they have to resend and all that. Let's uh, just break it up, okay? So break it up into sizes that actually fit. So suppose this guy has to be fragmented into three pieces. Okay, now you're designing the network, right? You have a choice, okay? The packet was fragmented at that router. What should we do at the next router? Should we put it back together? Or should we leave it as fragments? Well, that's what happens. They leave it as fragments. What, why would you want to leave it as fragments? All right, okay. What if this next link can't take the big packets either? Now you have to fragment it again and again and reassemble. Okay, but even more important than that, think about the routers. I mean, the routers are really busy. They have a lot to do. You try to make the router's job as simple as possible. Okay, if the routers had to put this guy back together, what would they have to do? They would have to keep track of all the pieces, make sure they got all the pieces. You know, they have to keep state, right? They have to keep track of stuff and then reassemble it. That's a lot of work for the router. So try to keep it simple, okay? Don't make the routers do any more work than they have to because their job's already difficult enough. Okay, so it just gets sent through, and then the host, the destination, um, actually reassembles it to, create, to reconstruct the packet. Okay. I uh, got that. So whenever it's fragmented, it gets reassembled at the destination. Okay, now why might this be a security issue? Why could there be problems related to fragmentation? Someone can change one of your 
Well, you could change a packet too, yeah. right? I mean, what's special about fragments? Worried about content of message. This is a security issue. You have to can't tell all this just from a fragment. That's right. I mean, you might be able to disguise what's actually in the packet itself because the fragments could be just tiny little pieces, each of which looks innocent by themselves. But when you put them back together, they do something bad. And it's actually even worse than that. You can specify in the fragments. Okay, if you're Trudy, you don't have to send off a whole packet. You can just make up a fragment, right? So you can make up a bunch of fragments whatever you want them to be. So they all look good. And you can even make it so that when the fragments are reassembled, they overlap, OK? So that really disguises what the original intent was. Okay? So there's a lot of issues with fragments. Another thing, think about the firewall. OK, here's a firewall, right, somewhere here. You know, the firewall sees some fragments come in. What's it going to do with those fragments? Well, it can look at each one and say, oh, this one looks good, this one looks good. When they get reassembled, there's something bad. Well, I'm worried about that. I don't want that. So I'm going to have my firewall reassemble all the fragments and make sure it's good before I pass it in. But that's a lot of work for the firewall. Now, if Trudy wants to do a denial of service, just send a lot of fragments there and keep that firewall really busy. Okay? So there's a lot of issues with fragments. And in fact, a lot of firewalls and such won't even deal with fragments. If they show up, it'll just you know, drop them and say, you know, start over. OK. Um, so, OK, again, they're reassembled at the destination, and they can obscure the purpose of the packet. That's really the, the crucial issue here. Um, and they can create a big burden for uh, firewalls and so on. OK, uh, IP version 6. OK, the version of IP that we use now is called IP version four. 5, right? Because we're going to 6. No. Oh, no, it's IP version 4, right? Okay. <laughs> So we currently use IP version uh, 4. Uh, the new and improved version is IP version 6. I don't know, what is IP version 5? I'm really curious about that. OK. There's a history of it on the internet. If we're to look. <laughs> uh, so OK, so IP version 6 is new and improved. What's, pr what's wrong with IP version 4? What's wrong with the current version of IP? Uh, nothing. The IP addresses, right, are too small. Whoever invented this to start with thought four billion addresses, huh, there will never be four billion computers in the whole history of the world, right? So we don't have to worry about that. Well, that was kind of short-sighted. So we need more addresses. So IP version 6, how big are the addresses in IP version 6? They're 128 bits, okay? So 2 to the 128, how big is that? It's big. Okay. We're never going to run out of IP addresses if we use IP version 6. So that's great. More IP addresses. It's kind of the main selling point here. Uh, it's bigger in the sense of uh, bigger addresses. I mean, way, way bigger. 128 bits. You can give an IP address to, I don't know, every molecule in the universe or something like that. OK, it's better security because um, IPsec, uh, which we will talk about, is um, they, they usually say IPsec is built into IP version 6, but that's not quite true. All the standard says is that if you use IP version 6, you are supposed to use IPsec. And you can use IPsec with IP version 4. You could use IP version 6 without IPsec, but you wouldn't be up to the standard. That's really all it says. Uh, but that would make things a lot more secure if everybody used it. Um, IPsec, as we'll see. OK, but the real issue here is how do you get from IP version 4 to IP version 6? This is good, right? This is a win. Everything's better with IP version 6. So why aren't we using IP version 6? So all the routers in the world are stuck with IP version 4. <laughs> <laughs> because the geniuses who invented IP version 6 never worried about this. Okay, They basically thought um, it was such a great idea that everyone would love it, and everyone would automatically use IP version 6. But in fact, if you're using IP version 4 and it basically works for you, there's not a lot of incentive to switch over. So it's not like you can just close down the internet for one day and then come back using IP version 6 the next day. You could have done that you know, 30 years ago, but you can't do that today. So uh, it's kind of a problem, the migration from version 4 to version 6. So I don't know. 
you know, when or if IP version 6 is ever going to happen. But if it did, at least there's kind of an interesting security angle there. It uh, would be more secure. I have only passing familiarity with software. It looks to me as if you could specify an IP version 6 address if you're talking to TCP and some of the other protocols. What happens if you do? You can. I mean, actually, people do use IP version 6. I don't know exactly what the tricks are. There's some tricks of embedding an IP version 4 address within an IP version 6 address, and there's all kinds of, but they're very, you know, they're, they're you know, why wasn't there built into the process, right, a way to get from here to there? Uh, okay, next layer down, right, so we're done with the network layer, the routers care about, everybody does that, right, now down at the link layer. Okay, so this is where it gets really, you know, cluttered in a sense. It, lots of different things could be happening on different links, right? You could have one link that's wireless, you know, and you could have one link that's using a point-to-point -point protocol, another link that's using Ethernet, you know, at your LAN, everything. All the links could conceivably be, uh, uh, be different because your packet's passed over the network. So the stuff that happens at the link layer uh, happens really out of control even of your operating system. This is in your network interface card, could be your ethernet card, could be your wireless card, right? Okay, that stuff, it's got its own computing resources, it sort of does its own thing. The OS passes the packet off to that guy and he just, you know, it, they call it a semi-autonomous device, kind of does its own thing on its own time with that. Uh, so it's mostly out of even the uh, operating system's control. Okay, so it does both the link layer and the physical layer. Uh, various protocols here, uh, one of the most interesting, so if you ever take a networking class, you spend a lot of time talking about Ethernet, right? So the issue with Ethernet is, say, using it on your local network, it's a shared media, right? Everybody's trying to send out their packets on this shared media. What happens if two people send their packet at the same time? They collide. What happens if they collide? The stronger packet wins? <laughs> Only one can survive. <laughs> Survival of the fittest. No, if your packets collide, they get corrupted, right? So it's no good. So if the packet's corrupted, what do you do? You both send again and they get corrupted again. Right? So you have this complicated, it's a very interesting process, this so-called exponential backup, right? You delay and then you delay twice as much and so on and so forth and eventually the packets do get through through that uh, process. So the issue is really, you know, how do you do this, how do you get your packets out there on the shared media in a completely